So if you wish to address the board on the topic that's on the agenda, it's not an opportunity for sort of a back and forth. It's an opportunity for you as members of the public to speak to the board before they make their decisions tonight. And so, so far I have five. <laughs> from cheering, clapping, booing, um, and so that we can, can conduct the meeting in silence, if at all possible, please. Thanks. <laughs> Public forum, Linda. I'm here this evening asking that school board abandon the option of closing either of their soy schools and work with the stakeholders throughout the district to find alternative ways to save money and, and to increase funding. I don't believe that enough consideration has been given to the safety of the students while being transported to to Oliver for school by the bus or private vehicle. The safety of the students need, on the buses needs to be a consideration with the increased potential for bullying. We all know there will be physical bullying, and some of that will be fairly easily detected. But I expect that verbally, the bullying will be much worse. We can't put our heads in the sands and pretend that this won't happen, because we know it will. Of even greater concern to me, though, is the number of students who will be traveling on driving to school every day. On any given day, you can find 20 vehicles, student vehicles in the parking lot often more. That means at least 40 vehicle trips a day, a, a week, or 40 vehicle trips a day between Oliver and Soyuz. And with the current 185 days of instruction in a year, that means at least 7,400 additional trips. Good evening trustees, and I just want to start off by saying thank you. I know you guys have not had an easy go the last two and a half months. And I just, on behalf of Save Our Schools and the entire community, I know you have a hard decision here tonight. But there's a couple of things I just want to bring to your attention. Um, next year, as we all know, we're heading into an election year. And I think if you would be gracious enough to allow us a one-year delay to come to the table and talk with all of us as stakeholders, I think the Christie Clark government is going to throw money at us. It's an election year. That's just my opinion. But I think there's going to be more funding coming. Also, with the um, funding announcement Monday and then in the last couple of weeks, we did a quick calculation. And we may be way off. but we're thinking it's about $200,000 of increased funding that you were not aware of when the recommendations come forward in January. So we're just asking that you really, really consider that. Um, when you make your decision tonight, the extra funding will make a difference in our school district. And lastly, I just want to say that our community has come together like never, ever before. And I think you have seen it and heard it. And there's another couple hundred people outside enjoying pizza with their kids running around right now. And I just want to say that our community is ready, no matter what the vote is tonight. Our kids are staying right here in Osuyas. And you have the survey results, 40% of the respondents said they will pull their kids out of the school district. And that's a reality. We're not just throwing that out there. That's a reality. Our kids will be pulled out of the school district and educated here in another fashion if the school is not here. So I just would like you to come to the table with us. I'm sure you've all heard all of the proposals. I just hope that this school board is really taking into consideration all of the suggestions that have been given to you. You're thinking about all of the amazing programs and new things that are planning to come to our school if we get to keep it. If you're going to make our community responsible for the district's problems, then there should be more representation for us in a vote. Or you need to share the burden throughout the whole district and not just with one community. Just in case you don't know it, a city is not a suburb of Boulder. Okay. At the school board office, maintenance facilities, we're in the the district superintendent, and the MLA lived in the city instead of Oliver, would you be considering closing the Asuya school? Not a chance. The school board had not built a school in Oliver capable of handling an extra 300 students. Would you be considering closing the school in Oliver or in Asuya's? 
Of course not. You wouldn't have anywhere else to send the kids, right? So somebody, somewhere, has a political agenda that says, close the school. How can you possibly justify building a school that big in a town with a declining population? It just blows my mind. So, so please vote wisely tonight and with that in mind. Please ask yourself, how important is educating your children in your community, your own? Because mark my words, your school will be next. And remember, there is always another way. Thank you. Um, and I'm really hoping that you have put some serious thought into all of the 24 options that you've been given over the last two and a half months. I just would like to rest tonight knowing that each and every one of you have read them and that you've seriously considered them. There were options that would have prevented this meeting tonight. If there have been some response to our city count, our town council requesting a meeting of all the communities so that we can sit down and go over the financials and determine how the shortcoming has occurred over the last two to three years. That response was never received. I graduated here in 2008. I stayed in Soyuz for my kids to know what a community looks like. I'm proud to be from Soyuz. Please think of all these young faces, all ages, that you will be affecting. They don't deserve it. They're not just a number. Please don't close our schools. I don't want to have to move my family, and I know a lot of us don't. Thanks. And while the senior staff might think that closing our schools is an option, I understand that. Um, I disagree, and the community dis disagrees, and the students disagree. When considering the budget, can we look at the necessity of keeping kindergarten to grade 12 in all of our communities first, and then look at spending on other issues after this keystone is met? If any of you are undecided about keeping our Soyuz schools open, could you, I just urge you to even think about delaying this decision while we think of something better and we can solve the problem. The closure of Soyuz Secondary School and the transfer of students to South Okanagan Secondary School, please. Madam Chair, I move that the decision to close the Soyuz Secondary School be delayed for one year so that the board has time to investigate both the cost versus benefit for all district facilities and the many issues raised during this consulting session. So would you move to amend the motion? I move, I move that we, that the decision to close OCD Secondary School be delayed for one year. That, that is a, that is a I'll repeat the motion. I move that the decision to close Osuya Secondary School be delayed for one year so that the board has time to investigate both the cost versus benefit of all district facilities and the many issues raised during this consultation period. I'll second that motion. I can open debate. What about the motion on the floor? This is the motion on the floor. I have not knuckled under. I've listened. I've not liked people thinking that we can have government by into. In a democracy, we challenge ideas. We don't intimidate. We don't insult. And if we don't close this school, 
there's going to be some really tight, tight budgeting. But it will give us a chance to look at some of the other ideas. There's been some crazy ideas out there. Get rid of the principles. <laughs> We've had four day weeks thrown at us. We even had hydroponic gardening, which <coughs> I thought was pretty good. Let's want to make some money for our schools. <coughs> I'm ready for a motion to remind each other. That's courage! I'll tell you why. In 2010, our district 53 went to all the communities, Okanagan Falls, which I represent, Carameas, Oliver, and Asuyas. And at that time, we had a facilities uh, plan set up, and we talked to all the communities at that time and said that we are going to have some problems. If things don't, so the students, the counselors, and also in in Oliver and in Caribbean, we didn't have many people coming at that time, but we did a lot of talking and explaining that this is going to be a problem because of declining enrollment, because the government is giving us less money every year already, and the time has come now to make a decision. Thank you. It's so hard when we um, have children involved. You know, it's hard not to think with your heart because that's what we do. We're, I do anyways. But, and especially when looking at possible school closures. But as school trustees, we're in the business of offering the best education possible for all students in the district. The decision to close either of our schools opens up a very real possibility of families seeking other educational alternatives. We have already heard that many would homeschool, consider going to Oroville, and that an independent school in this community will be a priority if families have no school here. As a board, we need to weigh the possible gains with potential losses our school district could be facing with the closure of either of these schools. It's a viable option, doesn't acknowledge the fact that we will likely lose many, if not all, of our alternate students. Our students with anxiety or special needs who are, are now part of the OASIS program that will be unable to handle the atmosphere of a full bus five days a week, not to mention the 10 plus extra hours of time spent away from home. These families have clearly stated that they will seek other options if this happens. They have the potential to further reduce enrollment, thereby putting us in a worse financial position. This has occurred in Rosalind, causing many problems, and we would be kidding ourselves to think it could not occur here. As far as small schools go, we have all read the research given to us by the Asuyas Elementary PAC that shows the benefit of small schools. While our children may not have unlimited options, we know that the relationships with staff and the benefits of going to school in this community far outweigh the benefits of a big school. Our schools have very caring and dedicated staff and administration who have spent a significant amount of time over the past two years researching options, visiting other schools, and coming up with a new timetable that allows more choice for students. We need to have more time to explore every option available to us, including the four-day week, administrative structure, and the impact of the announcement from the Ministry regarding increased funding. I implore my fellow trustees to please consider extending the time before making this decision over the next year to consider every option and possibility that would help develop a solution that will avoid closing a school. Thank you. When 
this um, possibility was first brought forward to um, from town council, I believe, was where this came from initially. I was approached by many parents who felt that another year of uncertainty was whether we were going to proceed with closing the school or not. And they felt that um, this would just... Uh, um, and, and my biggest fear is that we will go back to complacency after what we, we have tried in the last five years to engage the town council on numerous times and, and, and numerous opportunities. We have shared with our parents, with everyone, the challenges that we have faced. And, um, you know, we, we never really have had any, um, anyone engaging in conversations with us um, uh, around possible solutions. So I, I am, I am. Can we have a show of hands for the parents that don't want Excuse me, you are out of order. Sit down, thank you. There's a prison opening up. That is, you are out of order. Thank Tell you. The truth. There's a prison opening up. If you are going to shout and scream and interrupt, I'm going to ask you to right leave now, the meeting. 250 people. Families. I will ask you to leave the meeting if you continue to interrupt. So I I would like to proceed with either closing the school or not closing the school. Those in favour of this motion. The motion is that we that we um, that we delay the closure by one year. So those in favour of this motion. Opposed. <coughs> motion is defeated. So is that the Board of Education and School District Number 53, Okanagan Samokamin, approve the closure of Asui Secondary and the transfer of students to South Okanagan Secondary School? Can I have a move, please? Thank you, Rob. Second, Sam. Discussion. Just a reminder to our trustees. The provincial government provides the money to our district. We don't ask for it, they give it to us. To their funding model and their various policies, very seldom do they ask us how much money we need. With this money, the board must balance, balance the budget every year while putting forward the best education. The money that they give us is what we have to work with. Now, in 2015, 2016, we will be $600 over our allotted money. In, in 2016, so $600,000. Uh, 2015, 2016, $600,000 over our allotted money. In 2016, 2017, one million over our allotted money. In 2017, 2018, 1.3 million dollars over our allotted money. So that is a problem. Now, we did have a consultation in the Suez a number of times. And I thank all the people in the Suez and the surrounding area, the PAC, the teachers, all the stakeholders in the schools for the uh, information they provided us with emails and debates and letters. They were very important. We looked at them, I looked at them, and decided that there are some great uh, ideas as well. But we still have to go on. We do care. Our mandate, our mandate is to provide the best education for every student in our entire district. We have never questioned we have never questioned the quality of education in our, of what is happening in this school, in this community. My children attended this school. I know that this is a great school. This is a school that, that I, uh, up to now, have given kids all the opportunities that they need to graduate and to do well in life. 
However, I am concerned about the challenges that we will be facing in the next couple of years trying to uh, balance our budget. And yes, we have taken into consideration the new funding that we have received on Friday and in the last month. And um, we will still be fa facing a deficit. But with the new budget cuts that, um, that we'll, our district will be faced with, Unfortunately, we are going to have to have less options for students in our school district. At the last PAC meeting, um, the PAC, as well as the SOS committee, have, um, they have told me that they are still in favor of moving ahead and that we continue with all buildings open in the district. My concern is they have told me that they are very happy with kids attending split academic classes. That means French 11-12, English 11-12. They are not concerned if kids are in math classes that are blended. So that means math classes where you um, have calculus, where you have um, foundations of math. My, my, my worry is that I do not know if that is the best quality education that we can offer students in our high school. I'm concerned that teachers will be um, will be um, will be challenged to now deliver a curriculum instead of in 80 minutes in 60 minutes with a new timetable. So academic courses will be will be provided in 60 minutes instead of 80 minutes, which was was historically the case. So that means less time to provide the now not one curriculum but two curriculums. So that means the um, you'll be teaching two different levels of students and and in less time. That is the the, the struggle that I am facing. And then um, I have to balance that with the fact that students will be bused from here to Oliver. And to me, busing is a barrier. As soon as you uh, put something in place that kids have to be there at a certain time, if they miss that bus, they um, won't be able to, to attend school that day. I am concerned about our ACES students. I, they, we have approximately 20 students in our school um, that attended OASIS. Attendance are already a problem for those students. I'm not sure how they would be able to, to go to Oliver on a daily basis. And as we all know, if children do not attend, students don't attend school, we see a decrease in um, in absent uh, in student achievement. I'm also challenged. Uh, the other challenge that I see is that students who have a hard time um, are transitioning into new situations. I'm worried about how they will be able to now get themselves to the bus and go to uh, adjust to a new school. If that wouldn't be a barrier that would be built big enough for them that they won't um, make that trip and go to, to Oliver. The other challenge that, or the other challenge that I see is that if Osoy is, is not, no longer going to be provided an enrollment in our elementary school as we will now have less um, families moving to our town. So I am weighing in my head the quality of education versus the fact that kids have to be bused. And as I say, I believe that busing is a barrier. So I am worried about the fact that our graduation rates in Asoyas might drop because less students will be able to get themselves on the bus on a daily basis to a Soyuz, uh, to Oliver. So those, those, that is my thoughts on this.
I cannot imagine a community of this size without a high school, and I think we have to examine every option and work together to keep this school. I also have um, concerns about the bus um, and what impact riding the school bus will have on students with special needs and other challenges involved, as well as the OASIS pro program and how that will look, how that will be impacted. Um, also the students with anxiety adjustment issues um, and what will this uh, transition look like for all of them. Uh, going forward, uh, I would like to see a district-wide stakeholder consultation group made of trustees and community leaders collaborating and working together. Uh, looking at things such as declining enrollment and ways to support and grow our communities, each of our communities. Um, but also the reality is uh, our deficit is getting bigger every year due to rising costs. And we have to look at what the best use of dollars are in the district and what's the best interest for all students in the, dis in the whole district. School boards now really our, our management of, of, of the district uh, property and, and uh, resources for the province. Um, this may or may not be a good thing. That's not the debate here tonight. Um, we are charged with a couple different things that, that may seem at odds. Uh, one is provision of, a, provision of educational programs and the other is to balance a budget that we have no say in how, how we actually, or what we need for funding for that provision. Um, this again is, is a matter for debate for, for another forum, but um, it's, it's a, very, a very difficult situation that we find ourselves in. And quite frankly, it's, uh, with declining enrollment that we see, uh, not just in this district, but throughout the province, uh, Madam Chair, I think it's a it's a failure of, of government, um, multiple levels, both provincial and municipal, in the whole province. Um, rural BC has done a very poor job, in in general terms, of attracting industry. Um, it's it's something that I know the uh, the South Okanagan as a region has had struggles with for a long time. There's been a lot of rhetoric. Uh, directed to the board uh, and, and in the media uh, regarding provincial government. We've had, in the past 20 years, we've had provincial governments of two political stripes. Both have failed the education system badly. You know, I know when, when I was elected, yes, as an Oliver trustee, but when we sat there and swore ourselves into office, it was for the students in the entire district that we promised to provide quality education to not just students within our own personal communities. So I have sat and I've read through all of these letters and emails and my heart just breaks every, honestly every step of the way. And I am the new person on the board and I'm trying to understand a lot of the, a lot of the educational language, um, the acronyms and everything. And I remember being just four when, when last year we had uh, we had that we had the budget we had it prepared and then all of a sudden halfway through the the semester the, the school year we get that announcement from the gov the, the government of the province of British Columbia saying that we needed to do the administration we administ the cuttings to the administration and it's just like there's no predict there's no predictability with the government I mean we can rally them for money all we want but we need to also rally them for it to be predictable to be consistent in what they're saying, but they're not. But I know where my heart is at, and we have to make a decision for all students. And that's what makes this so tough, so incredibly hard. And now I have to think about the entire district, and it's very difficult. That's why I said a point of order. Know your policy. Parliamentary procedure says I can have a point of order on discussion. Is there any further discussion, or are you ready for me to call the, the question? <laughs>
So I'm going to call the question. Everybody in favor that the Board of Education of School District Number 53, Okanagan Samokumin, approve the closure of the Suez Secondary School and the transfer of students to South Okanagan Secondary School, effective June 30th, 2016. Please raise your hands. Everybody opposed? Motion is carried. Shame on you! disingenuous process I've ever seen in my life. From the so-called consultation process to playing victim to the media of being disrespected and, and of having consulted with counsel on many, many occasions simply isn't the case. And to state that the majority of this community didn't want or would have appreciated a one-year reprieve to this decision just isn't true. And I'd ask right now, is there anybody that actually feels that they wouldn't have rather had a one-year reprieve? Would we not? So what I've seen in our community show courage, the teachers show courage, the students show unbelievable courage. What I haven't seen is courage from most of the people up here. To play a victim and blame the provincial government and talk about the task you're faced with, what we did is we stood up and we fought. We came together and we fought. You had that opportunity and you didn't take it and now you can live with that because I'll tell you this, Watching what I've watched over the last two and a half months, this community will come together and open an independent school. This was a wrong decision. Uh, is it correct that it was possible as a choice that we could have delayed it by a year? So, well, that's not doing everything you can. Give us a year! 
But why, why was it so imperative that he dealt with right now? I believe that the of course, was because the majority of the trustees felt that, that it was to be dealt with now because we have tried in the last five years. We have tried. I think we are we are on the verge of the largest baby boom since the Second World War. I mean, this that don't know what's happened in the last five years. He, that he started them there. Like, we, have, we have looked at um, the, the, booth, the, booth, the live booths. We have looked at the booth rates from 2011 uh, up to this year. We have brought the statistics from Interior Health. And the booth rates have stayed consistent. There is no baby boom in. Uh, Are you kidding me? I work in the baby booth. <laughs> Up now. Bunch of fashion. Hi, I just wanted to address the board as a local realtor here, here in town. I don't know if anybody's aware of what's happening here in the community, but it's the first time since about 2005, 2006 that we've seen incredible sales. And the sales are coming out of places like Surrey and larger communities because they don't want to raise children in the larger communities. I personally am a brand new realtor here, and in the last month sold over $3 million in sales, and three of those were to brand new families in this community. One of them who's pregnant has one small child, another with three small children. We have a boom that we have not seen in this economy since 2005. And I'm telling you that this marketplace is changing, and this community in the face of this community is going to change because more and more people are going to move out of larger communities like Vancouver and around this uh, around this country. So if we are making a decision at a time when the community is growing and not decreasing, I know when you first started this process that it was possibly decreasing, maybe one child or two child children, whatever. But I have never seen it. Walk down Main Street. And look at every one of the real estate offices and you have never seen so many soul signs in this community since 2006. And I, I challenge anybody in this community, is there one family that would not contribute more money to keep their children in this community? I, I appreciate what the board had to do and I appreciate what the community has done, the effort the community has put in, but it is just incredible what has happened here in the last two months in the real estate. And it's not old farts like me that are moving into this community, it's small families that are, want to raise their children and want to bring their grandchildren. So thank you for your time, everybody.